Hey Heartlander, so in this video, I interview the one and only Amber Marshall. And we start off talking a little bit about the auction and a little bit about the new dog, Molly. And then we get to the real juicy stuff about Caleb and Nathan Price in season 18. Watch this. I was wondering about the auction because I've been like looking at everything and wanting to buy like every single thing, which is probably <laughs> not a good idea. But like, do you know, like, why was the auction even like, why did it start? A lot of people were worried like the auction means Heartland's ending. So I think the biggest question is why didn't this auction happen 10 years ago, basically, is because I've been saying this every single year. Heartland has a warehouse of clothing and most of it hasn't been used in over a decade. In fact, a lot of the items haven't been used in 17 years. So mm -hmm. I said, why do we keep collecting all of these items year after year? And they're all sitting in this warehouse. The warehouse is huge. If you walk into it, you're like, because not only are there one outfit for every or one, let's say Amy has this shirt. She doesn't just have this shirt. She has five of these shirts because you have to have them in all different sizes for doubles. You have to have them on standby in case for some reason I was to spill something on my shirt. There's another one there right ready to go. So not only is there one of these outfits for every day for each character, there is five outfits for every day for each character for all of the episodes. So it to me, it's ridiculous that we've held on to this stuff for this many years and it's accumulating and causing so much of a space shortage now in our warehouse that yeah. they've said, yeah, we can't, there's no, we have to get a new warehouse. I'm like, why don't what? you just get rid of some of the stuff that's there? <laughs> so I guess the bigger question is why didn't this happen sooner? Um, but I think maybe they hang on to stuff so that if we ever have to revisit an episode or a flashback or something, mm. but as we get older, I think that that just doesn't make sense either because a, we probably wouldn't fit into a lot of the clothes anyway. And I want to ask B, about that. I guess silly. going after now, extra small. <laughs> yeah. Funny thing is I do fit. I do fit into all those I clothes. I believe it. I'm like so jealous. I'm like on a yeah. crash diet because like I want to wear those extra small size zero clothes. I still go when I have an event to go to. I go back to Amy's closet for dresses because oh, a lot okay. of the dresses from season one, two, three still fit me. And I'm like, oh, I haven't worn this in a while. I'll and go they're back beautiful to too. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I just, I think that it, it just simply makes sense. I don't think that there's a specific reason other than the fact that we have no space left. Yeah. Um, so if they do want to purchase things for upcoming seasons. If that's the way that it goes, then we have to get rid of some of the old stuff, just like in your own house. You know, you have right. to every, every once in a while, hopefully it's more than every 17 years. <laughs> every, every once oh, in a while, you need to have a yard sale. And, uh, and now is finally the time. I think that's awesome. And I think the fans are so excited to be able to like, like, even if you just get something like Georgie's dress, maybe you won't be able to wear it because she was like 12. But you could even like frame it, keep it in your house. Well, I think it's an go, opportunity you know? for fans who have watched the show and can say, oh, I can see that that outfit in this episode and it's right here and I have it. And I know, it's so cool. And what? the crazy thing is a lot of that stuff that people are watching currently was from 10 years ago or longer so a lot of people will say hey remember in season four when you wore this jacket where's that from and I'm like I don't know it was well over a decade ago right. and I didn't buy it and so it's so hard to know where a lot of these clothing right. articles come from because again it was from so long ago so that is a nice thing about it too is that this is the ap opportunity not only to buy something similar to buy the exact outfit that was on right. the show and that and that's the thing like you said like for a lot of people like me tons of people we watch the seasons like it's like yesterday, but it was a long time ago, but it, it feels like it was just yesterday because we're still watching it. Yeah. Season. Yeah. And I think, well, and that's why I always say, you know, the Heartland fans know a lot more about the show than I do because they watch these episodes constantly. Whereas for myself, I haven't seen season one in 17 years. Well, I don't watch any TV. I hate to say it. So I, I'm yeah. not going to go back and sit and watch myself after right. just a, a <laughs> whole entire day. <laughs> <laughs> and I do, I like to watch the new episodes when they come out. A lot of people ask me that. They say, do you ever watch yourself? Do, is it weird? And I personally, you put so much time and effort into creating those episodes. Yeah. I want to see how they turn out. Like I want yeah. to see the final product. So um, I get to see little snippets here and there as they're editing together and that kind of thing. But it makes a big difference when it's finally complete and you've got music and sound effects and all those different things so and you don't I shoot do, it in order do you you don't really shoot in order do you shoot like depending on the weather and 
Yeah. So it's on locations. So we shoot primarily based on locations for two episodes at a time. So we'll take episode one and two, and we'll take all of the scenes that are filmed filmed at the ranch and put them on day one, two, and three. And then we'll take all the scenes that are filmed out in a random field and shoot them on day three, four, five, or whatever it might be. And then all of our studio scenes are shot all together. So it's so that we don't have to do, because our, our circus, what we call it, is where all the tracks <laughs> are, everything. And that's that's what we move from location to location and it takes a, a lot of people to move that and a lot of time and effort so we don't want to be moving that every scene that would be very impractical right and so they just do it per location for that reason and like the weather i know you guys have sometimes it's raining and you have to like shoot everything in the rain and like rush mm -hmm. through like the snow yeah is that really exciting or has that become like is it stressful like oh we gotta I go. wouldn't use the word exciting um <laughs> it's always it's a bit of uh it's just, it's something that you get used to when you're filming outdoors. And I think that we're very good at watching the weather and planning and trying to make it happen according to what the weather is supposed to be that week. That doesn't mean that we shift things around if it's calling for snow or rain. We just usually will have a cover option. So if there's a scene that's supposed to take place in the middle of the yard, we say, okay, can we make that scene work in the barn or can we make that scene work on the porch underneath the the mm. porch roof so I think that it's something that we just keep in mind but then there's times when it's just like nope we're just going to continue filming in the rain and it is what it is and sometimes it's real you know when you work on a farm you don't get to choose what the weather is you just continue right. on with activities and um, I ride my horses in the rain lots so it's just one of those things rain or shine you got to keep going yeah, it's amazing how you guys like um, there's so much continuity with the weather. It's it's so people say that um, people who like guest star on your show always say that they love coming there because you guys are like a well, they always use the same term, well oiled machine, like everybody knows what they're doing and you go from one place to another and they love that. I think that that's one of the, the magical things about Heartland is that 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 general tone was set right from season one because you can't be frantic around the horses or they're not going to want to perform. Same with kids. Yeah. And so we just, we've always done it that way. And I think a lot of people that come on to the show that are new, that haven't worked with us are instantly kind of like, whoa, okay, this is a yeah. different way of, of running things. And I think that it's a healthier way of running things. And maybe that has added to the longevity of the show because people do say, you know, it's like, I just want to come back to Heartland. It's and maybe that's like you said, um, the animals too, because um, you've been involved with the, that documentary, Rescued Hearts. Yeah. Um, and that's like their whole basis of they watch the show and they're like, wow, there's something about this, like animal, especially horses connection to people that just can change your whole life and change your work life, your personal life. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I felt it my whole life. That's why I've always had horses and been around them, because there's just there's nothing more therapeutic than just being with a horse and that doesn't necessarily mean riding them but it just is being in their presence and that calming nature and I think I believe dogs have it as well um yeah. but it's a, it's a different energy because dogs and it comes from I think dogs are a predator horses are a prey animal so horses have mm. this this flight instinct so you have to be very calm and gentle around them because if you start getting to anxious or stressed out or any of those things that horse is going to sense that and mm. they might be leery of it because now all of a sudden they're thinking well are you going to eat me like what what is going <laughs> on whereas a dog's energy is different because they do have a very calming energy to them but they're also in play mode so soon as you start jumping around and getting frantic or if you're stressed out or things like that they feel that and it turns into either play or they might just not want to be around that energy. So I think that each and every human and animal and different species all have a different energy that they transmit to those around them. And I think that horses especially are very calming and that just translates on set as well. So Molly, the, the dog uh, um, that Nathan Price Jr. has, I love that scene where you and him are like in the, in the truck and then Molly's like licking your face and like turning. Is that what, sort of what you mean? Like if she started jumping around in the truck and stuff, that would be an issue. <laughs> you know? Yep. Oh, for sure. And so that specific scene, I like to take a little bit of credit for because I went into the writers and I said, I feel like a dog really kind of breaks the ice. 
in, yeah. in a relationship, whether that's a romantic relationship or friends or whatever it might be, having the presence of a dog there just puts everybody kind of at ease. When Amy and Nathan are driving for him to have his dog in the middle of them. Cause that totally yeah. breaks the ice. It's not just like all of a sudden it's Amy and Nathan. Right. It's you now there's this, a bit of a distraction, a bit of a, a conversation starter, all of these things. And so they're like, Oh yeah, that's really cool. And then when we started filming that scene, I instantly regretted it. And everyone's <laughs> like, this is not happening. Like it's not working because of continuity, like you said. So we've got this very enthusiastic border collie who's sitting there in the middle but we couldn't get a take all the way through where the dog was doing the same thing. So the dog was maybe oh, no. like leaning on Nathan, leaning on Amy, looking out the window, <laughs> one of us. Like it was just all over the place. And so then instantly it was like, this isn't working. We cannot get this scene together where this dog is doing the same thing in every take. So it's not going to where it's not going to cut together. So then there was little tricks we had to do, like, you know, get in a little closer so we could kind of be above the dog for different singles so we could cut around mm -hmm. it. And, like, it, it turned into oh, this wow. thing where they were like, Amber, you wanted to put the dog in the scene. <laughs> it's like taking us three times as long. Um, <laughs> I do believe that it, it turned out really great and it did accomplish what I was hoping, where it's mm -hmm. kind of breaks the ice for that char the character connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was fun. Like, I love I love dogs. I'm a huge dog lover. So if I can have a dog in a scene, it's great. But then when it comes to, okay, we have to go again and, <laughs> and again and again in an already tight scheduled day, right. I was like, Ooh, maybe maybe this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> what do you see happening for season 18? I'm, like, do you think Mrs. Bell might come back? Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> I'm a real big I, Mrs. Bell proponent. Yeah, I mean, anything is possible. Yeah. Uh, I think as far as characters coming back there has to be a, a believable story for that type of thing yeah. and I think for my character I would like to see her really like kind of getting her confidence down and and knowing what she wants like Amy's been a little bit indecisive over the last little while and she, she doesn't really know what she wants and that's, that's <laughs> been Amy since the beginning of time right, right. but I think that if she can be a little bit more directionalized in her her thinking and and what she wants. I think that that would be good. Yeah, um, yeah. There's there's lots of of new exciting things on the horizon. Like I think she's got you know maybe a potential new spark that she's interested in, and she's got she. There was but it could be evil though, right? Evil. Yes. Yeah. And <laughs> there's. <laughs> There was a lot of really great moments with Caleb last year, you know, where Amy was like, he was coming back. Why wouldn't he? Oh, I don't know. Like, that's just a thing. Like he leaves and he goes somewhere with his son. That's really far away. No, he goes to Kelowna. Yeah. I drive to Kelowna all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You're traveling back and forth. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, there's definitely no characters that can't come back. Any character that has just moved away or has, you know, gone mm -hmm somewhere is always able to come back. I think that it's there's something special about their connection because they've known each other for so long and yeah. they dated even before Amy and Ty dated officially, right? This is not just about me. Yeah, since when? Oh, it isn't. You're the one who's always acting weird, not to mention Moody and... And, yes? Nice horse. Show Amy that wedding. Still haven't found anyone to take you. I'll do it. Oh, I feel so special. Thanks, Caleb. I've got a way. Then again, Amy's known Scott for a long time and Chase and Jeremy. I'm like, could, wouldn't it be awesome if Chase came back and was like, <laughs> hey, 30. <laughs> I know 30 is maybe a little bit far. 20? I'm not going to leave. I know you said before you would never leave. To keep going and it has momentum. And I, I've, I see, I see no end that I would want, like, I wouldn't want to create an end to the show. So I'm not going to leave the show. If the show wants to keep going and it has momentum, then I will be a part of it. Enjoy. <laughs> I enjoy my job. So as long as people keep enjoying it, then I get to keep doing what I love. But we'll keep, keep Heartland strong because. Yes. Wow, it was so cool to talk to Amber about season 18 and the fan appreciation auction. In everything else we talked about in this video, I'll put more information in the description below. And be on the lookout for more interviews coming up soon with some fan favorites like Mrs. Bell. 
And as usual, subscribe and like for the latest information on any Heartland news and updates. Bye for now.